Hey everybody, welcome back to another fun and exciting Algebra 1 class. Today we are going to be starting off uh, talking about chapter number 4. And in chapter number 4, we're going to be learning about what they call linear inequalities. Last lesson, we talked about linear equalities, or um, equations that formed lines on a graph. And we talked about the Cartesian plane and other things. Well, in this chapter, we're now going to be talking about those same types of equations, except for now, instead of an equation equals, we're going to be talking about an inequality or not equal. Um, there's a few things. If you'll look down here on page 126 in your book, that's where we'll be um, starting. 126 talks about the law of trichotomy. I've got it written down here on the screen. And it says that A equals B. This is the one that we've been really good at right here. We've been doing this a lot right here. A equals B. In other words, that is an equation. Something on this side equals something on this side. And that could be X's and Y's or letters or numbers or pluses or minuses. A number of different things can go into an equality or an equation. And what we're going to be talking about in this lesson are these two. A is less than B or A is greater than B. Now, in the law of trichotomy, here's what it, here's what it means, here's what it says. A number can only have three relationships to another number. For example, the number one can only have three relationships to another number or to another side of an equation or an inequation, inequality. So one equals one, okay? One equals one. And I don't know if that makes sense to you or not, but one does equal one, all right? What about this? One is less than two. One is less than two. And then how about this one? One is greater than zero. There are no other relationships that two numbers could have to, e to each other. So if you give one number, every other number in the world would have to be either equal to it, greater than it, or less than it. Okay, those are the only three options that you have. And any number that you pick has those three relationships. Uh, every other number is bigger than it, equal to it, or less than it. Okay, um, that's the law of trichotomy. And that's, it's important that you know that, but it's not, um, this may show up on a quiz or a test, but I think the concept is more important. The concept of understanding that numbers can only really have three relationships to each other, equal to, greater than, or less than. Those are the only three relationships that two numbers can have. Well, even though those are the only two relationships or three relationships that they can have, there are other ways that they could be, um, let's say, I, I hate the word use that because I use the word relationships again, but th there's other ways that they can be expressed. There's the word expressed. Um, other ways that they can be written, other ways that we could talk about them. What's another way that we could talk about them? Well, you could say this, one is not equal to two. So we're saying the same thing. We're saying that one is less than two, or we're saying that one is not equal to two. This does not uh, break the law of trichotomy because if one does not equal to, then it is either greater than or less than. There's two other things that it could be. Now, another way that we can express things is we could say that one is less than or equal to two. And that is true. One is less than two. But we could also say that one is less than or equal to one. And it is. One is equal to one. That's what this little thing down here underneath the less than sign means. If you put that little line underneath it, that means or equal to. And that's how you would say it. 
less than or equal to. That's what that one little line means underneath the uh, underneath the less than or greater than sign. And so, and then in this one, you would have one is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, and it is one is greater than zero. You could also say one is greater than or equal to one, and it is. Um, so, and, and here's here's the thing: these three things right here do not break the law of trichotomy. They're just different ways to express it. Basically, here you're saying that it could be less than or it could be equal to. When does this come into play? Well, maybe you you say. Um, uh, sometimes you go to a restaurant and, and me as a dad, when I go to restaurants, I like the ones that let kids eat free because I have kids. So maybe they say kids 12 and under. All right. They eat free. Kids 12 and under eat free. Well, what is that? That means that if X is less than or equal to 12 then the kid eats free so what is x x is the age of the kid well the the kid is um the kid is seven well there we go the kid is seven so seven is less than or equal to 12 so the kid eats free um the kid is 12 12 is less than or equal to 12 and it is so the kid eats free uh, me, okay, at 45, sorry, I don't eat free, I'm 45 years old, at least when I'm making this video, I don't know when you're watching it, but 45 years, I don't eat free, I wish I ate free, I like to eat free, but I can't eat free, because I am not less than or equal to 12. And so this is um, using inequalities and equals at the same time. Um, it could be equal to 12, but it's not necessarily equal to 12. Let me show you this real quick on the number line. And I'm going to show you the number line here in a little bit in a little bit more detail. But I'll show you this here really quick on the number line. So one, two, three, four. I think there's 12 there. And we'll call this zero, and then we can go to the negative side as well. And we'll call this negative one, we'll call this positive one. And I'm pretty sure I counted that right, but you can go count it if you want to. Um, and so the number line, you know, the number line keeps going. This would be two, three, four, five, six, and so on until we got to 12. The way that we would do this on the number line is um, this would be. Um, let me just show you this right here. This is on the next page, so this would be page 127. Um, an open dot and a closed dot, and I'm going to go over these just a second, but that's an open dot, and this is a closed dot. The closed dot means you color it in. The open dot means that you don't. So what does the open dot mean? It's not part of the solution. What does the closed dot mean? That it is part of the solution. So if I go up here and I circle 12, 12 is part of my solution. What does that mean? If I'm 12, I eat free. And so I would circle and then I would color in. I would make it a closed dot. Okay. This is how to graph on the number line. And then I would go this way. So if you are two, three, four, five, six, and so on. And now in this case, this is interesting right here. Um, in, in this case, I would also have to put a dot here because you can't be negative years old. So if we're using a real example, you'd also have to put a dot at zero and you could close in zero too because that would include kids that are not yet one year old. So if they're zero years old, then they would be able to eat for free too. But if you were negative one years old, you couldn't eat for free because you can't be negative one years old. All right, so um, these are the people that get to eat for free and that's how we would graph it. So anybody who falls into this category right here would eat for free. 
So something interesting there that we can do um, with inequalities is we can graph them on a number line, okay? And so the open dot is when it's not part of the solution. Let's go back and change this real quick. Now, kids, um, let, let's see, I need to change this to, I need to change this part. Kids, we'll write it like this. Kids under 12, eat free, okay? Now, if you're 12, you don't get to eat free. <laughs> Sorry, 12-year-olds, you don't get to eat for free. Um, you have to be under 12. So now what we would do is we, when we graph this, we'd graph it the same way except for this right here. We would put just a circle. We would not color it in. Why not? because 12 year olds do not eat free. So when they are not part of the solution, if you look here, the open dot, they are not part of the solution, okay? So they're, they're, if 12 year olds are not included, then you put a circle. If they are included, you would color in the circle right there. All right. Um, Let's, let's look at another example. Here's just an algebra example. This is not a real life example. So here's an algebra example. X is um, greater than or equal to two. And the one way that you can tell what sign you're looking at is the less than points left. Okay, so that's the less than. The greater than points right. So less than, greater than, um, hopefully that, that'll help you out a little bit as you're trying to remember which one's which. So this one is pointing to the right, so this one is greater than. So we have x is greater than or equal to 2. So when we go to graph that, we would, this number right here has a name. This number, and you'll get this in Algebra 2, but I'll talk about it right now. That number is called a critical number. Critical number. What is a critical number? A critical number is an important number. It's a number that, that basically we're going to start our number line at. We're going to begin our solution set at the critical number. So two is a critical number here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down and we always circle the two. Now, we don't know if we're gonna fill it in yet or not, but we just wanna circle it, okay? So we come down here and we circle the two. Why? Because two is a critical number because X is greater than or equal to two. So then we would want to say, do we fill it in? And the answer would be yes, because of the equal sign, it is part of the solution. So we're going to go ahead and fill it in, okay? And then one, this is, some students just look at this and they say, oh, I'm my, so my line goes to the right. The line goes to the right, the arrow points right, this thing points right, so my line goes right. That will work for you for a little while, but there's going to come a point at which that doesn't work anymore. So let me show you a better way to, to, to do this. What you do is you test a point. And so you test these points. So you're going to test zero. What do I mean by that? Instead of the X, you put zero is greater than or equal to two. Is it? No. So that side does not work. The zero side doesn't work over here. Now when we test four as, as like to see if that side might work, four is greater than or equal to two. And that is true. So we would come in and we would color in the arrow going up, okay? So that's kind of how to graph inequalities. Um, we'll do uh, we'll do one more real quick um, just to help you understand whether or not you you get it. So let's change this. Let's let's change this x is greater than or equal to two. Let's change it to x is less than negative three. X is less than negative three. So we would come over here to negative three. Remember, that's our critical number. And so we would circle negative three. 
Now we have to make a decision. Are we going to go up or are we going to go down? Well, we first of all, we have to make a decision. Are we going to color it in or not? And since it is not equal to, we would not color it in. We would leave it open. And so now the question is, do we go up or do we go down? Well, like I said, let's test some points. Let's test negative 4. Negative 4 is less than negative 3, and that is true. And so we're going to go to the left on this. Okay. And now notice that right now, a lot of times, the way that the arrow is pointing is the way that our, our line is going to go. But like I said, test those points. That way, when we get into higher level algebra, uh, you won't be relying on which way the sign is pointed because that will mess you up later. All right. Last thing I really need to talk about in this lesson is valid solutions. Valid means it works. It's true. Okay. So a valid solution, how do we figure out if something is valid or not? Well, what we do is what we've been doing all along. See, in this case, they give us x equals negative 2. That's the solution. And they want to know, is it valid? Well, all you do is you plug it in. And we've been doing this. It's like you check it. So you plug in the negative 2. So you'd say 2 times negative 2 plus 3 is greater than or equal to 7. And then you just solve it. And so 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 3 greater than or equal to 7. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1 is greater than or equal to 7. Is that true? Okay. No, that is not true. So this would be not valid would be our answer to that one. Okay. So all you do on those is you plug it in. Does it work? Valid. Does it not work? Not valid. And I think all of you can handle that. It's just plugging in, solving, and then answering the question. This is just you have now you have one more question at the end. And the question is yes or no. Did that work? Is that true? If it's true, you say valid. If it's false, you say not valid. Okay? And that's all I have for you. Well, uh, there's one more thing in the book, and, and this is on page number... 129 and th these are just some keywords so with less than some keywords and I'll write them down real quick you could say fewer and that's sometimes we don't hear that word a lot but fewer um, under below these are some keywords for less than for less than or equal to we could say no more than, so if he's no more than 12 years old, um, so no more than, or you could say at most, so he's at most 12 years old, you might hear that, but usually they're going to say, you know, something like less than 12, 12 or younger, something. Greater than, you would put at least, he's at least 12 years old. You know, you hear that to drive a car. You have to be at least 16. You have to be at least 18. So you can be 18. So that's part of the solution set. Um, another one would be no less than. So you can be no less than 18 to drive a car. No less than whatever. Uh, greater than. You could put more than. You could put over. That would be like, a you know, over the, the age of, or you could put above. So those are just some little helps there. All right, well, I think that's about all I have for you. Uh, if you missed anything, rewind it, take a look at it, and uh, see if you can figure it out, okay? We'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.